And a welcome back, everyone, on this Sunday morning. Great to have you with us, 819 the time, as we talk all things food, beverages, travel, and tourism. This is our health and fitness segment, a chance for us to take a look at the food, beverages, and activities in your life from the standpoint of overall well-being. I am Randall White, joined by my co-host, Patty Pyburn. Good morning. And a very good morning, Patty. I know that you have a couple of kids and a brother, and (laughs) you you have to shop for a full family. And when you go to the grocery store, that's not always easy on the budget when you're looking to buy nutritious foods, correct? Right. And to make everyone happy and to feel like I'm making good choices and not spending too much. It's a balancing (laughs) act, right? Yes. (laughs) Because, well, your kids are pretty good about wanting good nutritious food, but sometimes you're being tugged in several different directions. Absolutely. On that uh, level. And... And I feel sorry for the people that live in what we call food deserts, where they don't have access to uh, some of those uh, grocery farmers stores. markets, farmers and, markets, right? Yeah, and in more lucky too, even our supermarkets have access to great local produce. So, oh yeah, I have a store down the road from us. We call it Foods for the Rich and Famous because, <laughs> it, uh, and I won't name the store, but it is uh, it's really pricey and yes. <laughs> good and, choices, but it, <laughs> it it costs you. And I return again and again because I really want it. Well, uh, something caught my eye the other day online because who doesn't want to save some money when they're buying that healthy, nutritious food? And it was entitled Good Food on a Tight Budget. And I thought, aha, (laughs) here's a subject for the show. No doubt about it. Uh, So I started looking over the shopping guide and it's put together so well and so easy to uh, to navigate and find exciting tips. Uh, You can even watch a video with a nutritionist, Don Unduraga. I hope I'm pronouncing Dawn's name correctly. She is with the Environmental Working Group and joins us this morning on Eat, Drink, Explore Radio. Good morning, Dawn. Hi, Randall and Patty. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, Unduraga. Wait, (laughs) Unduraga? Unduraga. There you go. It's the it's the double R that kills me. I try and yes. I try. It, it depends on the placement of the word. Like I can say perro uh, very mm-hmm. easily, uh, but for some reason when a U precedes uh, the double R, I I get a little more tongue tied. At any rate, Dawn yeah. or Dawn, that's what I'll uh, refer to you as from here on out, if you don't mind. Uh, oh yeah. Wh- what was the thinking process behind putting this shopping guide together? Well, you know. Um, people are always saying, you know, healthy food, it's too expensive. And, you know, kind of the conventional wisdom is that healthy food is too expensive. And we and we all know that and feel that, you know, at the grocery store when we're trying to put, you know, our shopping cart together and putting good food on the table at night. Um, and so EWG um, wanted to ask that question, go to the research and ask, is it possible? And additionally, is it possible to do with the planet in mind? And you have a number of ways to go about this. Uh, you have sort of like before you shop, at home, and then at the store. So let's yep. start with the before you shop. What should you be doing? Well, the, the, the best thing you can do is to make a list. And I know people kind of know that, um, but, um, you know, you really, it really makes a difference. And actually using a meal planner is a great way to help um, create that list. So be so organized? Guys, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't do yeah. that. Do you, Patty? I try. I, I really cannot be successful at the grocery store without at least starting with a list, which I often forget at home, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do it on your iPhone? I do. I do now. Right. Yes. <laughs> Does Environmental Working Group have an iPhone <clears throat> app for this? You know, we don't yet, but I I do hope that we will get one in in the future. That would be great. But, you know, the thing is, when I was, you know, developing the guide along with the rest of the research team, you know, I started trying to do these, implement these tips that, (laughs) you know, I knew about, but, you know, actually doing them. And I found that with a meal planner, it's excellent because you actually, you throw less food away, which is a big problem. Also, you know, nearly 30 to 40 percent of the food in this country gets just thrown away. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's, uh, that's another way to save money. I know. I Sometimes when I look at my compost uh, bin, I am excited that I have such great compost, but I'm also thinking, wow, I throw away a lot, yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, produce and mainly and I, produce. I hate throwing away food. I try to be so creative with leftovers. That's one of the things I really, really hate is throwing away food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, protein is one of the expensive areas on a shopping list for sure. And one of your tips is yeah. to add beans and lentils to your meal plan. 
Yes, yes. Try to try to add them in in with meals. If you're gonna, you know, make a turkey chili, try to throw some beans in there too. That helps the, you know, the turkey go far, further. Or you know, replace meals. Uh, join uh, Meatless Monday, and uh, we have some recipes in there um, in our guide that you can um, look to for inspiration on that as well. Now, Don, I have a question for you. This is just a, one of my kind of shopping habits and I tend to buy more whole foods than already halfway prepared or totally prepared foods just I like to cook but is that a good approach or is it a money saving option to buy something that's partially prepared does that end up with less waste as far as Um, portion sizes you know when when it comes to the the cost you know back to basics you know you know using the bulk bins and you know whole foods that is really the best way to save money. Um, and, you know, trying to cook, you know, maybe once or twice a week and then use those meals throughout the week or put some stuff in the freezer, um, that's, that's kind of the best way to, you know, cooking at home. I, and I know it's a, it's a challenge for people, but um, that's really the best way to save money. And I know that that is, but then when I'm shopping down <laughs> the aisles of Trader Joe's and they have all these things oh, packaged and convenience. Oh, and convenience and stuff, and I yes. just think, oh, I, I could never prepare that at home with the sauce <laughs> and all that stuff. And then you give in to that impulse. and <laughs> Right. <laughs> It's uh, it's too bad. But uh, <clears throat> now at home, you say cook and freeze in large batches. I guess that goes into your your plan of cooking a couple of large meals and then serving yeah. those throughout the week, huh? Yeah, and then we also have you know recipes in here that you know take you know five to ten minutes. Um, you know, quick things you can throw together as well. So it doesn't all have to be slaving over a hot stove, uh, especially in summertime. Okay, Don, I have another question for you. So I love to go to a farmer's market and, you know, things like that. But honestly, I do a lot of shopping at, uh, you know, Costco, the places where you can buy big bulk items that when you do the math, it yep. saves you money. However, yep. <laughs> I find myself spending a ton of money, usually that I don't plan because there's things in there that are so appealing. And then also you gotta stick to the list. You got to stick right. to the list. For every minute you're in the grocery store, you, I think researchers send it's like you spend like $2.00. So the quicker you can get in and out. Wow. <laughs> and don't go shopping hungry? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a that's a really bad one. When you, when you go shopping hungry, everything looks good. So here's my my other question: is sometimes because I'm buying in bulk to save money, I have too much of something, I end up throwing it away, which yeah makes me crazy. Yeah. But so w- w- what's the balance there? It, am I really saving myself money in the long run? Um, well, you know, I can't really answer that from we didn't you know research that specific question. But you know, if you're throwing things away, then yeah, you're not you're not really saving you're not really saving the money. So we we suggest you know you buy things from bulk bins and kind of buy what you need, and then stock up on your per, your non perishables. You know, things like um, uh, dry beans are a good example. Although not everyone's going to you know have the time or be able to do that. Pressure um, cookers or, that saves the time on the dried. That's true. Yeah, pressure yes. cookers. Yes. I, very, I think it's very very true. An absolute necessity. Um, or, or, Mm-hmm. Yeah, or oils or things that are non-perishable, or, you, know, you know, or even big bags of frozen vegetables, um, things that, you know, will keep for a long time. Those, those are good things to buy in bulk. But if you're, if you're buying the things that can kind of go bad on you, then those are things that are probably better off not, um, not buying in bulk. So, Don, our whole next segment is uh, this topic I'm going to ask you right now, but I did want to get your take on it. You saw the study out of Stanford University oh, yes. looking at <laughs> organics. And organics are expensive at the store. What's your take? You know, um, we were, um, the Environmental Working Group, we're, we're, we're not really happy with the way that the, the, the headlines um, portrayed that study. You That's know, what there it was is. A it's lot the of, headlines. I agree with yeah, you. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of good findings in there. Organic milk. You know, definitely had more omega threes. You know, these great fats that are great for developing brains and you know heart disease and even maybe al- Alzheimer's. You know, so organic milk and organic chicken um, both having you know more nutrition that way. So you know, we kind of disagree with the overall yeah. spin of that. And also, it, you know, there was less pesticides in right. um, in in the in the um, organic. So yeah. you know, problems with the way it was portrayed for sure. Dawn, I got to let you go on that note, and I couldn't agree with you more. The headlines, the study, I did not have that big of a problem with. The headlines, I did.